Okay, so today I'm going to prove Euler's formula that e to the i theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta, and I'm going to do it in a non-traditional way. I've seen a lot of proofs of um, people expanding e to the x using a Taylor series approximation, and then rearranging the infinite sum to uh, prove that it's equal to the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. So instead of doing that, I'm going to set the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta equal to some complex function z. So we're going to let z equal cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. Then I'm going to solve for dz over d theta, or the first derivative of z. And that's going to be equal to the negative sine of theta plus i times the cosine of theta. And if we rearrange that, where we put i times the cosine of theta, and instead of writing minus sine times theta, I'm going to write that negative 1 as i squared, as i squared is equal to negative 1 like that. And then I'll factor out the i from both both terms, and we'll have cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta, like that. And now this is actually our z right here. So I have just proved that dz over d theta is equal to i times z. And now this is very useful because what we can do is we can rearrange that so that we have dz over z is equal to i d theta. And now with this, we can integrate both sides like that. And the integral of 1 over z with respect to z will be the ln of z, which will be equal to i as a constant times theta plus the constant c. Now we do e to both sides, so we are left with z is equal to e to the i theta plus c. And we'll write c as e to the c, or just times that constant c. Now we can prove this constant is in fact equal to 1 by substituting in theta equals 0 into z. So if we substitute theta equals 0 into z, then we will get cosine of 0, which is equal to 1, plus i times the sine of 0, which is equal to 0. So that would mean z would equal 1 and e to the i theta will be equal to 1 as well. So that would imply that our c is equal to 1. And that proves that z is equal to e to the i theta, and we know that z is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine theta. So therefore, e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta, and we're done.